Hi folks, it's Dean from Triple Dino on YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Lembe Strait near the island of Lembe and the island of Sulawesi in Indonesia. Now this has become a very popular spot. In fact they call it now or it's coined the muck diving mecca or the macro capital of the world by underwater photographers. Uh, worldwide and for good reason and uh, for that reason that I went I needed to see what I saw there on TV and, and wanted to see in documentaries wanted to experience that firsthand so I'm going to talk a little bit about Lembe Strait so um, Lembe Strait to, how do you get there well to get there you need to somehow Usually it's through Jakarta, so one way or another. You can fly in through Singapore, but eventually you're going to have to probably go to Jakarta. Uh, that's kind of the main entry point into the country, so... Um, and not really... I guess you can get there through Bali now that it's gotten... Bali's kind of taken off now. But really you're going to come in through Jakarta one way or the other, more than likely through. But you can still come through Singapore, Jakarta, and then you're probably going to come up to the northeastern part of Sulawesi Island, which is quite large. It's about three hours to, of flight time, just over the island, so it's quite huge. Um, the northeast corner of, or tip, of Sulawesi is uh, the main city there is called Manado. And so you'll fly into this, uh, after about a four hour flight out of Jakarta, you'll end up in Manado. And uh, right on the tip of the of this arm is a big volcano, so you got to drive about an hour and a half around the volcano to a little town called Bitang, and it's a little fishing village. Um, and alongside there is a bunch of lots of industrial activity going on there. And then right across, the, right across the strait is uh, Lembe Island, and this strait is very small. It might be only a mile long. It's very short and uh, which is what 1.6 kilometers so it's very narrow it's very it's only it takes about 10 or 15 minutes by their little tiny little boats outboard boats to go across there um, but it's very industrial there's lots of uh, industrial activity going through there a lot of fishing activity going through there um, this is not the kind of place you go to to go lie on the beach or something like that and have take pictures of giant reef systems or things like this. Just not what this is about. This is a very targeted vacation for those who are right into taking pictures of little guys, macro photography, and so that's what the big draw is here. And for some reason, they just love this. Uh, could be to do with the volcano here, constantly dropping volcanic volcanic ash in here and you'll see that on the bottom it's very blackish greenish grayish on the bottom and really 10 12 meters of vis max uh, the whole time you're there so um, and when you get down there it's just like a big moonscape <laughs> everything looks the same color there's no contrast you don't it doesn't look like there's anything alive down there at all but that goes away after a couple of days down there and then you see how how much life is actually there when you watch closely and your eyes your eyes will eventually adjust. First couple days though, stick close to your DM and uh, the big you know photographer cues that the lineups to take pictures of stuff that you'll eventually run into. Hopefully you'll have uh, competent photographers there so that they can just take their shot and take off rather than playing with their camera for 10 minutes each. So. You'll eventually want to learn how to find them yourself. That's what we did, and or or hire a private DM. That's also a great idea. So um, they have some rules there, and generally they want you to stay off the bottom. Uh, and generally, as a as a diver, you, your buoyancy control is important, and you should always stay off the bottom. Um, you damage sea life and reefs and all three systems and all kinds of stuff. But also, in this case of Limbe Strait, I mean, it's very poisonous there, and there's stonefish everywhere, and there's devilfish and scorpion fish and everything just waiting for you to, to touch their spines, and then you end up in the hospital. Um, 
So you don't want to end up in a situation where your vacation is going to be basically over if one of these things nails you. And it's very easy to forget when you're playing, um, when you're trying to be patient with creatures and then you start to go down towards the muck and you don't want to, you have to stay off the bottom. And they'll test you at the resort before you go out the first time. They're not going to just bring you out there without testing you. They're going to make sure that you can stay off the bottom and you have buoyancy control. Practice before you go. It'll pay off. Trust me. Uh, gear, uh, just following along the lines of staying off the bottom, uh, you're going to want a pointer and get a, a, a stainless steel pointer, maybe a foot and a half long or so, 18 inches, 30 centimeters, uh, stainless steel, so they, and attach to your BCD so you can let go of it if you need to. But it's good as a little brace to hold yourself, using a lot of photography, you can get tired and etc. So you might want to have something more, you, you start the current sometimes could grab you and, and throw you up against something, so it's nice to have something to prevent you from going into some other poisonous creature somewhere. <laughs> you know, there's lionfish everywhere. There's more species of lionfish you could imagine there. Um, camera gear-wise, macro lens, and a story. <laughs> You're not going to be putting a wide-angle lens there unless you go on the back side of the island. Uh, if you go around the back side of the island outside the strait, uh, there you can start to get into some colorful reef systems there. There's also some, um, last time I was there they were hunting for this new species of hairy frogfish there, so, and hairy shrimps and stuff like that that they were looking for, so they may have found them by then. Um, the resort that I stayed at when I was there was called Lembe Resort, and it's actually on the island, Lembe Island, so they picked us up in a little boat and took us across. So I highly recommend that place, but there's also some other very reputable places. Limbay Dive Lodge is another great one, and there's a bunch of excellent quality resorts. Great dive shots, very knowledgeable locals there uh, that know that inlet, that have, they've grown up there. And of course, there's, I guess we'll call them the famous E1, uh, who uh, my wife and I hired as a private uh, guide when we were there, knows the whole story about the uh, invasive cardinal fish uh, that ended up, end up, ended up in Limbay Strait and um, they're being well enjoyed by the little ribbon eels that are that inhabit the area there because they don't know the danger so they uh, but they're beautiful to photograph they're everywhere in Limbay now they're all over the place so uh, Ewan is a fantastic guide highly recommend it. you can get your hands on Ewan and take you out for a dive that's great very nice man uh, what else do I have for you? Uh, gear, we talked about rules, uh, tips, of course, is etiquette when you get in these lines and these queues. Stay in your queue or go away and, and don't get back in the queue. So don't try to jump in front of other photographers and let them get their shot. If it takes too long, go try to find something on your own. Um, what else here? Lots of endemic species. The biggest thing I noticed there was all the different species of frogfish. There's probably over 40 kinds there. Uh, I'm not a marine biologist, but I've heard there's over 40 kinds there, and I can believe it. I, I don't know how many. I, I probably shot at least 30 kinds when I was there. Uh, blue ring octopus, not endemic to there. They're all over Indonesia, but they're another fantastic species to uh, get a, a shot. And, and they can glowing blue rings are absolutely beautiful. I've got other videos that you can see on my channel of close-ups of the blue ring that were shot in um, and Rajampat as well as uh, Lembe. Uh, Blue band sea crate, beautiful. I had one go right up through my BCD. They're all over the place. They have little tiny mouths, so I don't think they can bite you anywhere other than your... They can bite you here. They can bite you between your fingers or something, but that's about it. Their two, head's too small, apparently. That's the that's what I've been told, anyways. They're, they can One bite will kill 40 adult males or something like that. Not to scare you, but it's, they're very poisonous. But they're also very docile, too. I've actually seen people handle them, so... Not me, <laughs> and I don't, don't, not you either. Um, so snake eels that you'll see in the mud, they're just like a little, you'll see the, like a little uh, beak almost sticking out with a big eye on it. That's a snake eel, they're actually quite long, and they find their way into the hole and they shoot up an ambush, an ambush predator. Ribbon eels, uh, you'll see that most of the ones I saw were yellow, but there's blue ones there as well. So I don't know whether it's juvenile or adult or something, or male or female, I'm not sure what the uh, color difference means, but I saw two different colors there. They look a lot larger on TV. They're very, very small. They're only a foot or two feet long, in the, and maybe a, 
an inch wide. They're very, very small, but they gobble up those uh, cardinal fish. Uh, mantis shrimp, great, great thing to uh, shoot. Colorful peacock ones as well as the red ones that are there. Just be careful. You keep your distance because they do have that little elbow thing that they can nail you with. They call them knuckle breakers there because the photographer has always come in for the peacock ones and the peacocks will nail them, especially if they've got their eggs, holding the eggs. They'll be extra aggressive and they might try to get your knuckles and, and that will be a bad day for you. Uh, scorpion fish, lots of beautiful colors. You, I've got some close-ups that you just would not believe. Uh, it's just a kaleidoscope of colors, absolutely beautiful. Uh, devil fish as well, just a fascinating creature I've never seen before. And lots of opportunities to take pictures of devil fish in Limbe Street. So, it's a great location, highly recommend it. Uh, you know, everybody wants to go to Rajampat or Wakatobi or places like that, but boy oh boy, don't miss out. Limbe is, is right on par with those in terms of, if you're into macro, boy, you gotta hit, you gotta hit that. You gotta hit there, Limbe Street, and at least go there for a week so you get a good chance to acclimatize and get your shots. Thanks for watching.